listening to Rashkin Report. You're listening to WSU, W91.7 FM, The Edge in Whitewater, Wisconsin. This is Rashkin Report, and I'm your host, Yuri Rashkin. I'm excited to welcome to the program today one of the most popular video bloggers, YouTubers in all of Russia, a man with over a million subscribers, uh, Dmitry Ivanov, Kamikaze Dead. Welcome to the program. Nice to meet you, Yuri. Thanks for inviting you have a tremendously popular uh, video blog on YouTube, and yet you have been running into a lot of technical problems that may not be altogether technical, that may be also political. Um, can you talk a little bit about what's been happening and the impact that it had on your huge audience? Uh, thank you. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to ask your viewers, your listeners, uh, to watch uh, my video that's called uh, YouTube, Russian YouTube serves Putin, where I explain how does censorship in the Russian YouTube uh, go, uh, how does it uh, block videos, uh, how does it uh, leave the videos from friends, and how does it cut off our income. And uh, I also having news every day coming unfortunately i can't tell them in english all the time but anyway there is such a such a firm such an organization as a bot bot factory bot factory which is yeah. located in saint petersburg addresses sabushkina 55 so there are numerous people sitting each has at least 200 or 300 accounts, and they're sending strikes, they're sending claims, they're uh, making dislikes to all the videos that criticize uh, Putin's government. They do it for budget money that they get from Putin's cook, Evgeny Prigozhin. There is also a lot of publications about uh, Bot Factory. You can find them in the internet. So if uh, your auditory, auditory, uh, listening audience, if your listening audience have heard something about uh, the perfect series Homeland, there is uh, a chapter when uh, when Factory Bot in the U.S. government is described. It's not working for you, U.S. government, however. In Russia, we have a real bot factory which is working for U.S. government. And Russian YouTube does nothing about this fact bot factory. So it's more comfortable for them to leave everything as it goes, to keep the censorship, keep the political uh, censorship. One of the reasons they do strikes and they do claims on my videos and videos of my colleagues who criticize Putin's regime is hatred. Hatred. But uh, together with this fact, no videos uh, where our politicians shout about Western countries that they should be destroyed. And there are several videos, not one, not two, hundreds of such videos on Russian YouTube, where Russian politicians shout about nuclear weapons that we can destroy, we can destroy a U.S. Uh, not act. They don't have such power as Hitler had. And uh, no claims they get. They get no claims on these videos. So censorship only for the videos that criticize Putin's regime. Dmitry, here's what I would like to understand. There is, uh, you say, a bot factory, but it sounds like, to me, it's like a tr troll army that is serving Mr. Putin. Um, is there no you know, resistance to it? Is there no number of Russian people, Russian YouTube users who would start attacking those videos that they disagree with, the pro-Putin videos, and try to take them down? Or is this just something that, like, trolls do and normal people don't do this? 
That's uh, that's the main thing, uh, Yuri. The, the, the thing is also that these trolls, these bots, they get money. Uh, they get around uh, 40, 50,000 rubles a month. So these are people that sold uh, their lives uh, for the work of Putin's regime. So they serve it, they work for it, and they sit all the day. It's a rather harsh job. It's very difficult. I have spoken about um, with this um, with uh, one of the um, workers there. She tried to work there just to get information, and she got information. And uh, she told uh, everybody about this bot factory. I made an interview with her. She, also, she tells that uh, it's a very difficult job because uh, editors that uh, and supervisors who watch after what these uh, bots and trolls are doing, they are very strict with them. There, is, uh, there are a lot of rules, a lot, a lot of regulations, what you should write, how you should dislike, what's the timing you should dislike. I have also an interview with her, but it's in Russian, so I guess uh, your view, listeners won't uh, get it. Never the way they can uh, read some articles in uh, right. Yeah, v v v there are some articles about... Uh, so bot so the fact so, that people so, are... Yeah. So yeah. the difference between these trolls, these bots, who work for money, so it's just yeah. a regular office day for them. Mm. And, like you said, normal people, they won't do that at first, because they are not idiots. Second, they have something to do. They go on YouTube to watch my videos, and that's all. They can leave a comment. They can... Uh, walk out for a demonstration if there is something important, really important, but sit the whole day and send strikes and claims to the videos who praise Putin and uh, criticize the position and uh, cause aggression towards Western countries, they won't do that because they have lives. Bots have work. My viewers have lives. Can you tell in a couple of words about your channel and what is it that you feel your audience really appreciates about what you do um, and uh, versus other, not to mention the general interest that Kremlin has now in YouTube, which it didn't have to. It didn't used to have an interest in this. My main goal is to tell about the problems that happen in Russia in small cities or not uh, getting enough uh, highlights. That's my main goal, to tell about these things. Uh, they are disgusting, they are harsh, they are really annoying, and every day I tell you, I'm telling my uh, viewers and uh, neutral auditory about how it goes in Russia, so that people won't get uh, any wrong information that's coming from our television. Our television doesn't say anything bad about Putin's regime. We only praise him. Uh, they somehow suggest that Putin's foreign politics are great. I don't know what's great when you uh, are in quarrel with every country except uh, North Korea. And what else? Uh, I don't uh, get it. Uh, I guess that's all. Okay. And why is Putin now paying attention to YouTube? Because after 26th of March, a lot of uh, people went to protest. It was a huge protest. And uh, not the biggest percent, but uh, I guess 5 or 10% of the uh, demonstra demonstrants, of the people who shouted, uh, Putin, leave, they were children, students and uh, senior scholars. Uh, scholars, I mean, uh, the people who... I learn in school, so Students. high grade, high grades. So sure. they went, and um, Putin's administration understood that it's, it's, it's something needs to be done. That's why yesterday or the day before yesterday, Putin met uh, with some uh, school children and spoke with them, just showing that he is also discussing problems with uh, school children, but it's not. It's not so, because it was just a performance of uh, little children who recorded their questions to Putin. And Putin, who 
or numerously rehearsed his answers. So that's not a discussion. Discussion is in internet, in YouTube. And they understand that if they leave it like it goes, the protests are huge in the Russian internet. It's the main board where we discuss politics because we can't discuss, this, uh, discuss it on our TV, on our radio stations, on our newspapers that's blocked. That doesn't go through the censorship. Uh, last uh, resort is uh, Russian YouTube and Russian internet as well. That's why they do that way, uh, the only thing they can. They buy trolls, they buy bots to make them do dislikes, claims, strikes, closing, shutting down the opposition channels. So it's just like freedom of speech. Uh, in the reality, they suppress it with uh, policemen and with army units. Seriously, we have army units on our demonstrations in Moscow. Just look at videos in Russia, not only Moscow, sorry. And um, secondly, uh, they, they understand that uh, in, uh, in reality, they close our mouths with the help of police and army and the internet they spam with trolls and bots that's how putin's putin's regime works works you're listening to a rashkin report on 91.7 fm the edge in whitewater wisconsin this is yuri rashkin and my guest today is dmitry ivanov who is one of the most popular vloggers youtubers in russia with over a million subscribers uh, recently, he's been having a problem with YouTube um, and uh, the the Putin's army of trolls that has been aimed at Russian opposition of vloggers. Anybody who says anything opposite of what the official, I guess I feel like saying party line is, but it used to be a communist party. Now it's a different party. But nonetheless, there is one point of view. And if you have a different point of view, uh, that's that's not really good. So, Dmitry, let me ask you, um, in the last six months since the uh, United States has a new president, uh, do you feel the situation in Russia has changed for worse or better? I guess it's not connected with uh, Trump elections. Uh, okay. No. Uh, yes, it has changed a lot. And in, it has changed uh, also in relationships with the USA. When Trump officially says, stop working with Syria's uh, criminals in the government, Russia to Russia, he says it to Russia. And we all hear it. It's not what Obama said, for example. So um, Putin's officials, they understand that um, if the USA won't tolerate anymore, that someone else is involving in the serious conflict that we do not like. So uh, they try to heat up the pressure. They tell more and more that Western countries are manipulated by someone, by Trump. They always tell that Western countries are against Russia in anything that Russia do, d does. They do not explain that Western countries really appreciate uh, Bashar Assad, not as a official politic, but as a criminal, war criminal. And it's a matter of time when he gets the same uh, sentence as our dictators got. It's just a matter of time. And in Russia, we, in, on TV, on radio, on newspapers, it's vice versa. So vice versa, it's Russia against the whole world. We're in the circles of enemies. There are many, many, many circles of enemies, and we always get aggression. So that's why we need to be strong. That's why we don't need any freedom of speech. That's why we cannot uh, eat seriously. They just tell us it's harsh times, difficult times. People are dying because of wars in Syria. That's why we have to starve. They seriously say it on the Russian TV shows. No joke. Do you feel that the solution to improving situation in Russia lies from within Russia or is solution has to come from outside? It's a great question, Yuri. 
I guess that's both. That's okay. uh, what I do. I'm a bad English speaker. I can't uh, do You're anything to, to 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 tell it to, to Western countries what's the situation like in country. Anyway, they're not paying attention. Every normal person lives his own life. Your listeners, they live their right. own lives. Their interest in politics lies only when they see that uh, prices in the shops are too high. Or, for example, police is doing some unlawful things, and etc., etc., etc. They are not normal people, are not interested in what happens in Russia. I mean, not Russians, but other people, Western. And the problem about Russian people, they are not interested in what's happening in Russia. Cause of propaganda. Propaganda right. tells them that all the Western countries are facing huge problems. They, are really, they live in poverty. And in Russia, the minimum salary, you will laugh. Just, it's, it's real poverty. It's real poverty. So the, I guess no, it's not the minimum salary in Russia, but it's средняя um, арифметическая. Mm, average the average. mean the, something like yeah, that average, average. average salary in russia is uh, and it's good average salary it's good uh, 20000 rubles 20000 russian rubles but what I is the ex- you know what is the exchange rate now and what can you buy with that 20000 you, your listeners can watch uh, what's this exchange rate so they can compare it to the level of life in their country and they can um, evaluate what the Russian propaganda is doing with the brains of Russian people. And so yes, out of 140 million people in Russia, out of 140 million people in Russia, there is at least 1 million that is paying attention th- through your vlog. Um, are you the most popular political blog in Russia, or do you feel there's anybody else that covers politics that has bigger audience than you do? I guess it's not about popularity, it's about highlighting topics. There are some topics that have no notorious offers, video bloggers, they just upload the video, and that's all, the video gets hundreds of thousands of views, and that's great. Nobody explains there, like me, what's happening. No, 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 no. Not all the videos in the internet that are popular in Russian internet connected with politics, uh, they have... Uh, speaking heads there. Now, I guess that uh, popularity of political bloggers is growing and it's great because people understood there is uh, the only possibility to tell something that happens in your country is to use uh, internet and YouTube. So we're moving in that direction. So you're providing context. This is very important. Um, Thank you. Perhaps my final question, Dmitry, how do you feel about your own personal safety in this environment where you ha- you have high visibility, you continue to broadcast from Russia, um, you're critical of government, um, how safe do you feel? I left Russia three months ago. That's the best... That's, that's an important point, okay. That's the best answer to your question, because I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe because it's um, a lot of examples when at six o'clock in the morning, police is coming to the apartment of the person who criticizes the regime. Not only coming, but by also throwing him some drugs to arrest him and then to torture him. That's a regular thing in Russia. Putin likes to speak about Guantanamo, but in Russia we have Guantanamo nearly in every city in every police department. So, one Guantanamo versus these uh, numerous uh, police departments through a bunch of Russian cities, I guess uh, Guantanamo wins. So you're out now, and that I guess that uh, answers my other question, which is, can you influence what's going on in Russia without being in Russia. And it looks like you're doing just fine. 
So I explain uh, it uh, to all to my viewers who sometimes ask me, you leave Russia, so you have no right to criticize it. As I have sit uh, in uh, my Moscow apartment doing videos, now I am sitting in my European apartment doing videos, I get my information from the internet. So it doesn't matter where I live. I can assure you, I know a lot of things about my country, not living there in comparison with a person who lives there, but knows nothing. So the question is whether am I allowed to criticize, morally allowed, I mean, right. to criticize. It's not a question for me. I'm obliged. I'm obliged to tell this all. Dmitry, what would you like the Western audiences that are listening to this in English? What do you want them to do about the situation that has been created? How can people make a difference? How can they help? I would like to ask uh, all of your listeners to pay attention to my video called uh, Russian YouTube serves Putin. Everything is described there. And I'd like to ask uh, if uh, some has some connections with uh, Western bloggers or Western media to tell them about this video. So it must be public. It must be public because uh, the media in Russia, a lot of have reprinted my video, but they can do nothing. Uh, media in Russia have no power. Media in the West have power because uh, it's a lot of... Uh, because we're, we're, uh, we're consumers. Yes, so you, you you are able to move something. We are not able in uh, with Russian media to do it. So please uh, make it public. Dmitry Ivanov, Kamikaze Dead. Please follow him on YouTube. Sure. Thank you so much for being uh, on the program. Sure. And I hope we can continue this in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're listening to 91.7 FM. WSUW in Whitewater, Wisconsin. You're listening to Rashkin Report.